Hello everybody and welcome back to Insurmountable. We've got a long way to go before we even at our first peak, but we've come quite a long way as well. You see that little orange marker there in the background? That's, that's where we've come from, so we've come quite a long way. Right now we're not too high up, not in the death zone just yet, but we may well be in the future. I think we're going to go around the left of this massive outcrop here to get these two events. We have some snowshoes, so the snow isn't too bad anymore. I'm just more concerned about any dangerous terrain, but if we go up the top it might take a little bit more energy, but it's safer, and I think we should take safeness as our best option, really. I do love the way this game looks. It's very atmospheric, I think, anyway. We're going to go... Okay, we're going to go around. We'll have to change our route slightly. Okay, we'll do that. We need to think about whether we want to stay. There's a cave over there. That might be where we stay for the night. If there's an easy way around, it doesn't necessarily look like there is one. First of all, let's just see what's here, and then we'll see if we can actually plan a route over there. We found a fairy light. As you gaze around, you notice a faint light in the distance. It fits back and forth, up and down. Approach it carefully, it's going to take some time. Ah, that's not good. We lose some time when letting the light up to your sight. You walk straight towards it, beyond paying attention to where you put your feet and you stumble. You catch yourself, but the light is gone. Confused, you look around and realise you've lost your way. So we lose some temperature. We also lose some time. Not good at all. We may need to uh, we may need to sleep out in the open. Or well, we have a tent. Conserve strength. This is a active one for the rest of the mission. Uh, reduce energy cost, but time is increased on terrain. Install the mountain. We can get 75% experience gain in events, but we'd have to activate that. Or Euphoria 2. When active in the death zone. I think we're going to take Euphoria 2, because we'll be heading for the death zone fairly soon. I'm going to head up to this, uh, this shrine and try to pick up what we've missed. And we may well end up sleeping out in the open. We'll have to see. As you approach a skeletal tree, you discover countless red ribbons with gold lettering tied with spindly branches. Unfortunately, you can't decipher the writing. You don't know why, but for some reason you find the spot very moving. We can wish for health, but we don't have any health loss. We could wish for energy, which is arguably a lot more important. Okay, there's a way over to that cave, but by the time we get there, it's going to become pretty much daytime again, so I'm actually going to cancel that and I'm going to sleep with our tent till daytime. Purely because I think it's the, the right thing to do. So we use one of our tent durability. So two more uses. We still have a spare tent as well. But I think if we waited to get to that cave it would take too long. Unfortunately, there's a, there's a little bit of a treacherous path now. We're going to have to go via that treacherous bit. Hopefully we don't cause a, an event, but we could do. Seems we've got away with it. Wonderful. Now from here, where do we go? Go that way. There's only one marker. Only one kind of possible bad event marker, so I think we'll do that. It's got a long way to go. I'm hoping we can go up this left hand side, at least to some extent. Is there anything around here that we want to look at? There's a chest thing over here. I suppose we could be changing between our stone shoes and our snowshoes all the time, but that feels a little bit micromanagey, to be honest with you. If, if we get to a big stone section, then I'll change back, but given we're in the snow, I think it's okay. Uh, you discovered a buried chest. We'll dig up the chest. It's going to take a little bit of time and a lot of energy. But we find some canned food. That's good. Canned food is always useful. That's some short-term energy boost should we need it. Remind me, what does our grappling hook do? Uh, reduces the energy cost of climbing for a limited time. 40% energy cost on all terrain. Three uses left. Only a duration of three hours, though. It's not ideal. There's a cave there, but I feel like we don't need the cave for the time being. It would be a waste to go off. 
up here, that's a lot of climbing. Even just climbing up here is going to be a big cost in energy. But I don't really see what other options we have. We're now in the climbing, kind of the quite high, heavy climbing portion. I think we'll go around this right hand side. That left hand side looks too treacherous, I would say. Is there a safer way we can go? No, we have to go up here. Okay. I suppose, we, I suppose we could have gone down and round, actually. Oh, boy. You march up a hill where the wind has left wavy patterns in the snow cover. Endless. Uniform. Hypnotised, you take one step after another. Suddenly, you slip and land on your behind. You slide down the slope of breakneck speed, your arms swaying wildly. Finally, you come to a stop, your heart pounding against your ribs. That was close. Well, we can go to here. Is there, a, is there a safer way to go? It's going to take longer. But I'd argue it's still the better thing to be doing to avoid any events. Because if we take any major injuries, then we're in some real trouble. I do need to keep an eye on my energy. It's getting quite low. But we're probably going to go for a sleep sometime soon. We found an abandoned radio relay station. You cannot believe your eyes. The four antennas blocking your path. We take a detour, but that takes quite some time. We can stay and look around, I think we'll do that. You're certain that the antenna is from the years of occupation. Maybe it's from some kind of radio st relay station? What was it used for? You ponder as you continue on your way. We gain some experience. Are there any caves nearby that we could f f that we could use to rest? I don't particularly want to go down again. Let's cave up there, but that might be tomorrow's staying kind of safe safe point as it were. Ooh, everywhere we go here there's bits we're gonna have to cover. Okay, we're gonna have to go on that place there, that's just unfortunate, but we're just gonna have to manage it. Hopefully once we get past there we should be in less trouble. Good. We've got an event or something down here. That will take us to the night time. But there might be a safer way to do... Oh, goodness me. Are there any caves at all nearby that we can take? Because I think we're going to head up this rocky formation. And stop by all these obelisks and stuff on the way past. It may not be worth it to go back down there, but I think we'll do it anyway. And then we'll probably sleep the night where we are. Again, no tent or no cave to kind of look after us for the time being. But well, let's see what we find here. <coughs> you catch a scent on the wind, burning wood. You follow your nose and behind you some rocky peaks. You discover a patched, dingy looking tent. Next to the tent, the great embers of a campfire emit a thin plume of smoke. You look around, not a cell for miles. We can call out in case the owner is nearby. Continue our journey. Such a tent. We'll see if we can find the person. You call out, no response. Suddenly, you hear heavy breathing. A local mountaineer with a dead mountain hair, hair slung over his shoulder makes his way towards you. He gives you a friendly nod. Uh, without a word, he soaks the camp's fine since the hair. In no time, the meat is roasting nicely on a spit over the fire, giving off a mouth-watering aroma. The stranger gestures for you to join him. You gratefully accept his offer. You can use some refreshments right about now. Excellent. Thank you, sir. That was worth doing. If there's no immediate cave, which I don't think there is, sadly. There's one over there, but it's not worth going for. Can we get around there? Okay, we can get around there relatively safely. But for now, I think we're going to have to sleep again. We can sleep outside, but that would make our body temperature and our sanity go down. Fundamentally, we might want to save our tent for better, for better times, but for now we'll sleep. Get our energy back, because our energy was getting pretty low. Thankfully, the man with the hair there was able to help. Do we go to the, do we go to the obelisk? Because we can go to the obelisk and then climb straight up that way. So I think we'll do that. 
then probably once we're on that stone, we'll switch back to our stone boots for the time being. Because that'll be less uh, energy usage on the stone, which feels useful. But what do we can get here from the shrine? I'm hoping for sanity, maybe. The golden eagle suddenly lands in front of you, its wings carrying it majestically to the ground. Fascinated, you watch it, and it watches you, unafraid. You can't explain it, the encounter feels magical. Fully wrapped up in this moment, you regain warmth, not that we need it. Sanity, I would say we do need. We're now going to climb up, that's going to cost us a big pile of energy. What we're going to do is switch back to our stone shoes. Heavy boots, energy cost on stone. We don't need our uh, snow boots for the time being. It's going to save that little bit of energy while we're climbing here on the stone. I'm not going to micromanage every single tile, but kind of for these big portions of stone, then I will do. A mysterious discovery. You're trudging across a snow-covered plain when your boot catches on something lengthwise along the ground. You're stunned to discover a thick black cable. Why is it here? Where does it lead? We can follow the cable, or we can pull on the cable. I'm going to pull on the cable. You feel the resistance, you tug again as hard as you can, and you did it. The cable comes loose. You pull and pull until finally a bag full of provisions lands in your hands. You have no idea who tied it to the end of the cable or why, but you take what you can get. We get ourselves a climbing rope. Wonderful. It's a second climbing rope, but our inventory is getting pretty full. That being said, our tent is probably going to... Our first tent is probably going to go soon, so that's okay. We've got some interesting climbing to do ahead of us. I think that cave there, that's our... That might be our place where we stay, but I don't know. Even even that climbing doesn't look too bad, so I'd say we can just use we can go there. Hopefully we don't take too many issues from rogue events turning up, but I might be wrong. Just have a quick look at how things are doing. We still have warm nights, thankfully. And it's our first ascent, so we're focused and driven. I can't imagine how that's gonna change going forward. We found a chest. Uh, we're going to dig out the chest. We'll take the time to do that. That's fine. We find some equipment. We have found insulated boots. That gives us some warmth. What can we get rid of, if anything, at the moment? I'm just going to... Do I want to eat the food or do I want to hold on to it? I don't know. Oh. I feel like I'm just going to leave those behind. I know body temperature is important, but my th I've already got the fur gloves and I feel like we're always going to want to have something to do with the terrain on our shoes. So I'm going to confirm that that'll be left behind. I just think that's the better option. Our energy's getting pretty low, we've got to, we've got to watch that. If we make it up to the cave, that'll nearly be night time anyway, so I think we'll head for there. And then we can spend the night there, getting our energy back, because we're gonna we're taking a big drop here. But from here, we should hopefully be able to make our way further on. Uh, we're gonna lie down and sleep. Therefore, we don't need to use our tent. Thankfully, we'll sleep. Today is cold. Tomorrow is stormy. Visibility is gonna drop significantly in the storm. I might even suggest that we take a bit more time and wait till daytime where we sleep some more. But now we can't because the cave is done. We'll head to the shrine. Is there a safer way to do that? Yes, there is. Where it probably takes a bit longer, but it's still safer to do. So I think we will do that. And we'll probably give energy as opposed to sanity, but we'll have to see. A jingling air fills the air around. A jingling fills the air around you, harmonious and melodious, followed by the sound of falling rain. You follow the sound to discover tubes of metal and wood tied together in a bare treetop, dancing and striking together in the wind. You watch the winds chime and lose yourself in the fifty melodies. You can regain health. But we haven't lost any yet. Santi, I will happily take. Uh, right before we get stormy, I want to kind of plan my route. We can go up this way. But I don't know what else awaits us past there. Or we can go around the other way. This way. But I don't know quite. That feels like a 
that feels like a longer, more complicated route for less benefit, to be honest with you. We might, um, oh, do we head up there to get that item? That feels a little bit risky. We're slowly making our ascent. I think we're going to actually go the other way. So going to take a little bit of energy, but we may well camp down if the storm gets particularly bad. However, is that worth getting? To, is this worth getting to first? I think I'm going to do that just to first of all get a better idea idea of what's over here, but also we can potentially get an item. But we'll soon we're in the death zone, and that's going to be a problem. But first we have an issue. As you attempt to jump off a pile of debris, you slip and catch your foot in the crack between the rocks. Your ankle is in agony. We can quickly yank my foot out of the crack. That feels like a bad idea. Or clear away the rubble. I'm going to do that. It's probably the safer, safer way to do things. You laboriously clear the rubble rock by rock. You don't want to take any risks just in case your ankle is sprained. It takes a while, but eventually the crack is wide enough for you to gingerly pull your foot free. You check it. Just a graze. We got away with it, but I think had we yanked it free, we'd be in a much worse situation, I would say. It's a reminder that things can get tougher now. We'll soon we'll be in the death zone. I think as soon as we end the death zone, we're going to have some more issues, I would say. Fresh snow is piled higher ahead of you on a mountainside. There must have been an avalanche here recently. As you trudge through the heaps of snow, you gaze, your gaze falls on a vacuum full of tea. It is half buried in the snow. I take the tea, I continue my journey. I don't know if we can take the time and energy to afford to dig. We're going to take the tea. As it says, you stow the flask in your peck and quickly move on. It's too dangerous here. I'm sure there's a chap hiding there and probably dying, but I don't feel like we can spend the time to wait. Okay, so controlled breathing. We get additional oxygen, which might be useful. You can only have 100. Active to the end of the mission, that's pretty useful. We're about to go to the death zone, so I probably will grab that. Warm thoughts. Because you've item, we gain full body temperature and mindfulness, we gain sanity. I will take controlled breathing because we're about to go into the death zone. And that's a problem. Not, not a problem necessarily. Ooh. See, my problem. Oh, I see, we would go kind of via there. Just trying to see in terms of like safety what the best route is. There's a lot of markers I'm seeing there. Whereas the other way, I generally feel like there's less. So I think we can go that way. I mean, there's three markers. I hope we'll be okay. And not take any issues with events. Thankfully, we're still getting oxygen because we're, we're below the death zone but soon, in just a second. I imagine we'll be back up into it. I think this will be the first point of the death zone, so we might just stop here. Here we are. The air is getting thin and your breath is heavy. You have entered the death zone. You pause for a moment to prepare for the difficult path towards the summit. We can ascend as quickly as possible. That gives us... Um, 35% energy cost not to rain, but energy cost is energy cost is useful. We can go for take it slow, ends in 24 hours, one oxygen per hour and moving. Or we can mend our sanity. I think I'm going to take it slower. We still have four uses of our tent. And I'm hoping we might still find a cave or something. We've still got a long way to go before there. Goodness me. Okay, onwards. We've got 24 hours, so I'm keen to keep pushing on, although we are pushing forward in a, s we're pushing forward in a storm. Whereas if we push forward in a... If we push forward in the sunny daytime, that would probably be a bit better. I think this is the better option to go, this shorter, more energy intense route, but with less risk attached. I think that was important to do. Okay, I will go see what's in that chest, but we have, first of all we have another issue. You approach the canyon, notice that a rope has been stretched across it. You could have done that and do you risk using it? 
Ooh. Do we take the detour? That loses us a bit of oxygen. I'm concerned that we'll take a major injury. I'm going to take the detour. If the rope snapped, you would never survive the fall. You just had to find another way. Again, I think not an ideal situation, but one we had to take. We're still gaining oxygen at the moment. Although that's only going to get worse and worse as time goes up, I presume. And we only have to preserve your breath for a little bit longer. As you climb towards the crevasse in the glacier, you can see an oxygen bottle together with an oxygen mask buried under a thick layer of ice. The bottle seems to be intact. We can dig. That's going to take a lot of energy and, and um, temperature. We can use a stone to break the ice. We can use a stone. Ooh, that might have come at a cost, though. Shards fly as you smash a sharp stone against the ice over and over. Your hands hurt and your knuckles are bloody. But finally, you've removed enough ice to gain. Grab the oxygen bottle and put it towards yourself. Injured hand. 30% energy cost while climbing. But we get ourselves an oxygen bottle. But where can we put it? We don't even have space for it. Oh, I think we ditched this first tent. I think we ditched that first tent to take the oxygen bottle. It's a shame that we can't just use the tent now. Is there something else I would take away instead? I could get rid of the heavy boat boots because we're going onto the stone now. Or we're going onto the snow, I think. That might be the wrong decision, but I want to use that tent. So the snow boot, the heavy boots are going to stay behind for now. That might be a terrible decision. But my hope is that it's all snow, but it's so hard to tell with the storm. Do we want to sleep here? Do we want to keep going? There's a cave up there. That's going to take a good old while to get to, I think. And not as much as I thought, actually. Let's see if we can plot ourselves a safer route round. From there, can you get me up somewhere safely? Ooh. It's not perfect. For now, let's go to here, avoiding any kind of injuries on the way. The thing is, I don't know if we have the energy to make it all the way up. But I want to make use of the oxygen bonus we have for the time being. We can go here. But it's not a very safe way to go. Is there, a, a, there might be a safer passage, but not really. We go here. That's probably the safer way. We'll go up to this event here, see what happens. And we might try push that cave so we don't have to use our tent. You find a backpack concealed under a thin layer of snow. Blueprints that lead away from the spot in a zigzag pattern disappear under a rock. We can follow the tracks, that's a lot of energy we don't have time to spare. We can search the backpack. We find empty brandy bottles but nothing else. We gain some experience, but nothing else worth taking, and our character is taking a beating there. But I think we want to try and make it up here to get to the cave. Is there an, Can we avoid that event, I wonder? If we can, wonderful. If we go around a slightly longer way, I just need to watch my energy. But tomorrow is clear. Should be good. I want to save the tent. There's a cave there, let's make use of it. I don't know how many more caves we're going to find. We might need the tent as we go higher and higher up. You encounter a cloaked mountaineer. He points at your flask and holds his hand together. I can give him tea. We have some spare tea. Mountaineer bow bows and continues on his way. We gain some sanity, some experience, but nothing else. I was hoping he would give us something useful. That's fine, we'll go to the cave. 
because our energy is very low. We've been pushing a lot today. Our oxygen for the time being is okay. Still just about making a positive outcome. Do we explore, given how little... I'm just going to lie down and sleep. I don't think we have the energy to wait, really. We'll lose some oxygen while sleeping, but I think we need to get our energy back. It's daybreak, it's clear. That allows us to see a little bit better. Excellent. This thing, as, I'm, as I don't think there are many more caves... There's a shrine over there. I think... Oh, hang on. I was going to say we can go around in a different way, but we're here now. That's fine. It's probably the quickest way up. We find a stone plaque. We can stay and dig it up, or we can continue on our journey. That's a lot of energy to lose. But it's already midday, so I'm actually going to do that. As you're digging the earth with your bare hands, your gaze falls on the characters etched in the stone. Presumably some kind of writing system. You get that you're able, unable to read the characters. There must have been the civilization here a long time ago. What must have led to their downfall? Finally, you're able to free the plaque and lift it up. You find some provisions beneath. Some tea. So far, we haven't had too many issues with temperature. We may yet do in the future. Do we want to go around that way? That feels like a not very safe way to go. Or do we climb upwards onto very dangerous ice? I don't think we want to be doing that. Okay, let's head over to the cave. If only just so we can sleep there. We might find something useful. Especially as our energy is low, I think we need to. We're using a lot of energy per day now. Our oxygen is okay, our sanity is okay, our body temperature is okay. We need to keep an eye on our energy, that's for sure. We haven't got that far into the death zone yet. In fact, we're going a bit up and down. Uh, we're going to lie down and sleep for a long time to get our energy back. It is going to cost us some oxygen, but I think it'll be worthwhile. My question is, is there a way from here that we can get up further? Because the ice does not feel like a very clever thing to be doing, to be honest with you. I can see the summit, we're not far off. For the time being, let's just go for this shrine and see what we find. And I think we'll go back the way we came. So we find the eagle again, seems to be following us a lot actually. Santi, we can get like a warmth. Warmth we're okay on, we'll take the Santi. If we were to go up like straight this way, that's a lot of dangerous events. So that's climbing over ice. I say that it's only it's only what one, two, three, four. Okay, it's four if we went around that way. Going back over that way would we'll actually have some more complications, it seems. So I wonder if we're actually better off taking this slightly more precarious route and hoping for the best. We just go up yonder. It's going to take us a lot of energy, so we're going to have to sleep once we get up there. We encounter the cloaked mountaineer again. He's holding a vacuum flask filled with tea in his hands, which he passes to you. And he pulls out some herbs and a torch and offers them to you alternately. I only take the vacuum flask filled with tea. I take the tea and the herbs. I take all his items. I take the tea and the torch. Hmm. I don't take them all. But I'm glad we managed to help him out and he feels better. We'll take the tea and the torch. I don't want to take everything from him. We have a lot of tea at the moment. So arguably I don't need another tea. I'd like to take the torch. But that's only a one... Oh, that's a one-off use for eight hours. I think we get rid of the tent. Do we get rid of the tent? We need the tent. We have so we have so much tea already. That's the thing. 
I think we have to at this point. The tents are so big. The mountaineer smiles and bows, he can then continues on his way. What a nice chap. Oh, that took us a lot of energy. Or will take us a lot of energy. We can take it slow so we gain more energy, body temperature, and oxygen when we wake up. Control breathing. Significantly increased oxygen per hour. That might be useful. Add it to the end of the mission. Preserve energy. That's again a limited time effect. I think we can take control breathing. Because if we can just avoid having any oxygen issues, then we can focus on the other meters without too much worry. I think we'll go around that way. Once we've got up there, I'm going to use more of my climbing ropes. Oh boy. You climb up your way up a sheer wall of ice. You suddenly feel a fidget draft, and a split second later, you hear the crash of impact. You throw your head back and see them looming above. Enormous columns of ice growing along the cliff face. One of them just hurled down into the depths. Ooh, do we. We're going to the detour. It's hopefully safer. It's a big cost of energy, but that's okay. And some body temperature and oxygen, but I think it's worth it to get up here. At this point, we are just going to have to uh, take some chances with the vents. Crates filled with dynamite are stacked in a small cave. Behind the crates, you can just make out a few torches. Now those will be useful. Do we need another torch? It says dynamite. I don't really want to do anything with it. That's a lot of time to waste. Not necessarily waste, but... We've been climbing through the night... Orange is going to be low, but we'll do it anyway. We get in ourselves another torch. And we're going to drop some tea. We don't need this much tea at the moment. We can't take everything. It's now daytime. I don't know if having not slept, that's going to actually have an issue for us. As long as we've got the energy, I'm guessing that's okay. I don't know if there are any more caves around there. That's the problem. I'm going to use one of my climbing ropes. I don't know where I put them, however. Where do I, do I put them here? How do I use it? Oh, I see. I'm going to use one of my climbing ropes here to save some energy to get up higher. Let's go there, find ourselves as safe a route as possible, even if we move slowly. Ice takes more energy, I think, but it's arguably a lot safer. So I think we'll do that. And I think we'll climb up there via all the events. We're so nearly there. There's only, okay, there's only one potential event, and I think we got past it okay. We do need to watch our energy levels. We might take our food item if we need it. We'll have to see. We find an intact tent. There's nobody in sight, but embers in the fire pit are still glowing. We can search the camp. I think... Ooh, it's obviously being used by someone. No... Let's, let's, let's keep our sanity, I think. We're going to head up here. Hopefully we don't have any more major issues with an event. It's good to me we should probably keep more energy with us because if we're going to have so many, so many issues with events, then we could have an issue overall if we don't have enough energy to deal with it. Steps have been hewn into the stone, leading you to a pedestal of sorts. Some type of religious shrine, site or shrine, maybe. We will take the energy. We needed that desperately. There's a cave. That can be our sleeping point. Excellent. That'll work well for us. We'll keep our tent for the for the peak, which we're so nearly there for. So we'll go over there, and then we'll ascend tomorrow. Your breath is taken away. Towering in front of you on the slopes are bizarrely shaped masses of ice and snow. You, are, you see several tents not far away. Who set up camp here? You call out, but no one answers. We can approach the camp and see what we find. 
You nice conscious beneath your boots. Every step could be your last. You close your eyes. Oh, there's a lot of stuff. Finally, you reach your goal. The compass has been abandoned with not a soul in sight. They surely left long ago. You're unsure of the things they left behind and find some equipment. At least your efforts weren't in vain. Hiking staff. Uh, 2% energy cost on flat terrain. 2% time when climbing, one height difference. So that's more useful lower down. I'm going to get rid of one of my torches. I don't think we need them because we already have a flashlight. The torch feels less useful. I think we'll make it over. We'll head, o we'll head over to the cave and sleep there. Is there a safer way we can go? Yes, there is. Good. We'll do that then. The quickest way is not necessarily the best way, that's for sure. And then we'll go we'll go stay in the cave, see what's over here, and then I think we'll make our final ascent tomorrow. It's not far now. We'll stay in the cave overnight. You encounter a cave. It's dry and sheltered from the wind. At the rear of the cave, you hear you notice a faint stream of light. We'll follow the We'll follow the light, and uh, we realise it's going to be hundreds of fireflies. Wonderful. You enter a cave. It's dry and sheltered. We're going to sleep. We will sleep for a long time. Get our energy back. Our oxygen is still doing okay. We do have an oxygen bottle, should we need it. I think if we can look after our oxygen, then the other meter shouldn't be too much of an issue. I want to see what this is, though, here, before we make our final ascent. You lean back against the rock face, a distant melody, which is your soft... It reaches your ear, soft and tender and beautiful. You close your eyes for a moment, breathing deeply and evenly. You keep listening. The music seems to be coming from inside the mountain. Could it yet be another legacy of the occupiers, or maybe its origins are more mysterious? Whatever it is, it makes you smile. Hey, having more experience points is useful. Right, it's going to be cold tomorrow, so I'd like to maybe try to make the ascent today, to be honest. Honestly, that looks like a pretty good route. Off you go, lad. Cool. Ladette, I think. Our health is... We haven't taken any major health issues this run, which is good. It is cold today. But I think we'll make it up. As long as we have no major issues with events. We'll probably stop when we get to this event, and then we'll see what we need to do next. Uh, you spot a deer stand between two skeletal trees just ahead of you. As you consider walking over to the deer stand to uh, search for provisions, you hear a rumbling. It sounds like an avalanche. You see the snow cloud on the horizon is setting straight for you. Absolutely not. Not worth it. Not worth it to be caught in an avalanche. No thank you. We'll go to there. We might have found some good things in the deer place, but I think we're doing okay on all our meters for the time being. I think we would have had some issues had we... Or caught in an avalanche. That's that's a death trap for people who are mountaineering. We're so nearly there. <laughs> okay, let's go forward, avoiding these rocky outcrops. Not necessarily, you know, it might be the fastest way, but it's not necessarily the safest way. And then I think we can make it straight up. Let's make it up to the very top. And we'll have ascended our very first peak. How about that? We've made it. At the summit. Your heart feels light and full of joy as you stand on the summit. The hardship of the climb already forgotten. You save the moment. It is yours and yours alone. What an adventure. What a view. Off the distance you can see more mountains. Higher even than the one um, you are standing on. And what's that? Something stands atop one of them, long and thin. From this distance it looks like an antenna. That can't be right. Or can it? You want to take a closer look. You aren't done exploring yet. But first, you have to get out of the death zone and find a safe place to take a break. We get a bunch of experience and we get our first summit. Wonderful. But what goes up must come down. That's our place we've got to get to. Just because we made it up doesn't mean that's everything yet. But look at this. Gorgeous game. Gorgeous, gorgeous game. In terms of levelling up, we can conserve strength active to the end of this mission. That's the thing, I've got quite a few things which are only till the end of this mission. Which is probably a little bit of a problem. 
but all of them are only active to the end of this mission. 10% time cost on all terrain, that might be quite useful. Under the stars, I don't think we need. Conserve strength, I think, is probably the best one. We will go for that. But I think, as we made it to the top, we will leave it there. Next time, we will try and make our descent safely and securely under what looks like quite rough terrain to our to base camp. And then from there, I'm guessing we'll have a new mission to do. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.